Welcome back, everybody. We are here with the next installment of TikTok Summer Songwriting Series. Uh, very excited today to be here. We have uh, the artist, obviously, Melanie Martinez, artist and songwriter. And we have Michael Keenan, who's been her executive producer uh, throughout her two big album releases and has been with her every step of her career. Um, I am Bill Wordy. I am the director of the Bandier program for the uh, recording and entertainment industries at Syracuse University. And this whole experience is part of a program with After School All Stars, an absolutely amazing organization that works with students in under resourced communities to give them every opportunity that they deserve and every opportunity they need. So, today, in addition to speaking to all of your fans, Melanie and Michael, uh, we're also going to be talking to some great students who Thanks. are really looking forward to uh, the wisdom you have to share, the insights you have to share, and probably some fun stories about uh, some of the hit songs that. We all know extremely well, especially if we are paying attention to TikTok at all. And of course we all are. So welcome. Thank you, this is exciting. Thank you, yeah, we're very excited to be here. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Um, so let's get right started. I mean, Playdate right now is one of the biggest songs on TikTok, which is one of the biggest platforms in music anywhere. So ergo, you have one of the biggest songs in the world in Playdate, as far as I'm concerned. When you were setting about making this song, did you have any understanding that it was, I mean, you included this as a bonus track on your <laughs> first album. Yeah, it does a lot. I mean- It doesn't sound to me like you thought this was gonna be the no. single to end all singles. No, honestly, it was the biggest surprise ever, um, especially, you know, five years later, it's like so unexpected, um, but I'm super grateful that people connect with it and resonate with it right now. Um, it's one of my favorite songs and me and Mikey have always loved it, but yeah, yeah it just, we felt like story-wise it belonged more uh, as a bonus track on Crybaby than uh, on the standard album. It's so pretty and it has such a unique sound. I think like a lot of your music, you get classified as sort of like alt pop sometimes, which is one of these designations. Do you know what that means when people call you alt pop? Do you no, have a- We talk about this all the time. Like genre doesn't really exist for us. Like we, we are influenced by a lot of things when we make music, like sometimes we'll, we like having elements of all types of different genres. So uh, it's kind of like this mashup and mix of everything that we've ever really been influenced by, I think in yeah. our lives and what we think sounds good in the moment. So uh, I know- Everything's supposed to be a little bit genre bending yeah. and blended, you know? Yeah. So that's actually, we, we have some questions from uh, students that uh, may come in as we talk. One of the questions from students, and you sort of just touched on this, so, so I, I'll I'll check in with you about it. Uh, Zanaria Jackman from New Jersey asks, uh, when you're writing a song, where do you start? So maybe we can pick this song um, and and check in on that. Okay, yeah. I mean, well, Playdate, it was written five years ago. Uh, so it's quite a long time ago, but I think that every single time I've ever written a song, I always start with the title. It's the most important thing for me to have a clear concept of what it is that I'm trying to say as far as the story goes. So it has to be very clear from beginning to end. And um, I can be a little like too critical on myself with that sometimes. And uh, sometimes I'll take it a little too literal and try to tell the story as best as I can. And lately I've been trying to open up more and um, kind of create multiple meanings for one theme so it still fits within the world but it also has multiple other layers that other people can resonate and connect with um with play date i just it was you know i hadn't really ever experienced that um dynamic yet like a superficial connection because i was so young when i wrote it but it was kind of like foreshadowing the experiences that i would have later on in my life which i thought was really interesting um but yeah, as far as like other songs go, I'll just have a list of like 70 to 80 titles and I'll just kind of, we'll be working, it's just kind of overwhelming to be honest, but but we'll just uh, find chords first. Uh, Mikey will, you know, bring out the MIDI keyboard usually, or we'll go on the piano or guitar, yeah. uh, whatever we're, we're feeling. And then we'll find chords. Uh, sometimes we'll base it off of a voice memo. So I have like a long list of voice memos that I'll just randomly while I'm walking in the street or um, you know, just showering or whatever, I'll just make a voice memo and then I'll bring it into the studio later on and we'll listen to them and we'll see which ones uh, compel us to write a song. And sometimes we'll move on it and we don't end up liking it. And then we end up just scrapping everything and saying, you know what, let's just find chords. You know, we like a, a different instrument that inspires us and let's just start from scratch and not be afraid to try a new idea. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's all so dependent on the, you know, the day really that we're having. 
Yeah, there's so many forms of inspiration. Like it could just be an idea that popped into your yeah. head mm -hmm. or it could be a sound that we find mm -hmm. that's just random and interesting sounding. Like it, it there's no like one answer, mm -hmm. but. It sounds like part of the process of songwriting for you both is being very open to inspiration and documenting it as it happens. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. It's a very There's never a wrong time to grab yeah. your iPhone, right? Yeah. No. Exactly. <laughs> the iPhone voice memos is yeah. one of the greatest tools that we all have. Yeah. Honestly, like every person that I know in the music industry at some point or another is using that app to make their ideas happen. Yeah. I think the I think the notes app is is like the new Tin Pan Alley of of the music industry. It's great. <laughs> It is. Yeah, it's true. It's funny too, because like something about the quality of the way it sounds is desirable sometimes. So I'll even just put my iPhone over at the piano and that'll be like my recording medium. I won't set up really nice microphones and really expensive gear. I'll just, you know, airdrop the recording from voice memos of the piano over to Pro Tools and then start working on it. So I want to ask, because we're talking about songwriting, we're talking about composition and really kind of going from the beginning to the end of a song. Um, with Playdate, Mikey, what was your earliest memory of Playdate in any context? Um, well, so the, so Playdate was originally uh, an idea that Mel thought of with uh, this, this our, fr our friend Jen DeSilvio. Um, so it came to me almost as like a last minute thing because I had done the other few songs on the Crybaby project. And then um, this one came to me and I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Like we have, really want to work on this. So it was just like, just the vocal with some interesting piano thing. Jen, Jen can play piano really well. Um, so it was like this classical piano almost sounding thing. And the first thing that I did was find that main, that main instrument that kind of, I can even pull it up and show you real quick. The main instrument that was in Playdate is, it or sounds do you want to play like the demo first. The just the oh yeah, yeah, true, true, true. So this I have is what the demo. he was sent. So this is what me yeah. and Jen sent him um, over to Mikey originally. Yep. So one second. You call me on the telephone. You feel so far away. You tell me to come over, there's some games you wanna play I'm walking to your house, nobody's home Just me and you and you and me alone We're just playing hide and seek, it's getting hard to breathe So you can already kind of hear like the bounce is already there mm -hmm. and like the feelings already there But we grabbed, let's see, the main instrument This is what really started the inspiration for me for going was this thing So that was the main instrument that started it all for me. I just thought that sound was so cool and interesting and unique. And how did you come across that? Um, so it was a sound in Omnisphere, um, which I can also pull up. Just give me one second, because it's an old session and it likes to act real funky. So if you look at the um, session here, Omnisphere is pulling up, which is a pretty common um, program. So what it is, it's a combination of this thing, the plastic Stratocaster, and I'm not going to try to read that, <laughs> but this guitar instrument, and that's, those are the two sounds that make up that sound. And it's just right here with an Omnisphere, which I'm sure probably most people who have Omnisphere could pull up. Very cool. Very cool. Um, so is this, when you, Mikey, once you get your hands on a song, do you do most of your work in this? Yes, I work mainly in Pro Tools. Um, I started in a program called Reason, which um, I no longer use anymore. I, I use it like occasionally, but pretty much everything now is just within Pro Tools. Okay, excellent. Um, listen, I want to ask, Melanie, I want to go take a, a step back now for both of you. When we're talking to students, obviously, I think such a big part of these conversations is helping them understand what different paths can look like, what different paths forward can look like. Um, and, and I think these students and, and frankly, most people listening, they take a lot of inspiration from your stories and the stories of other artists um, who've been able to kind of 
break out of the pack a little bit and find some footing as, as an artist. Um, can you talk just a little bit about maybe each of you lessons that you take away from your earliest days? Maybe there's a key decision that you did or didn't make. Maybe there's a key moment that, you know, could have gone either way, but, but it was really yeah. important that you did this thing. Yeah, I think everyone's path is different. You're so right with that. Um, me and Mikey's path was so completely different. So the fact that we even crossed paths is so, you know, I mean, it, it seems so unlikely, you know, but wow. it, you know, it, it's, it's very interesting for me. Like the way that I started was when I was younger, I was super into just writing poetry. So I was kind of like a writer prior to really uh, making songs or anything like that. I didn't really write any music, um, but then I started to learn how to play guitar and I taught myself how to play guitar just by looking up like YouTube tutorials and chord diagrams. Um, even when we, you know, make music now, I mean, Mikey's just like still learning how to play guitar too. And yeah, he has like yeah. a chord diagram book that we'll just like pull out and just try to find cool chords to, yeah, like. This is the book. Yeah. This is so, how I translate <laughs> piano chords into guitar chords. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So I started with guitar and then just started to write music, uh, would mix my poetry with playing guitar and find melodies that would make sense with what I was writing. And then as you know, I started to go along, I just started to write my own music and post videos on YouTube. Um, and then I auditioned for The Voice randomly. Uh, my parents saw this like open call listed online and uh, they took me to Manhattan. I almost didn't make it. My car like broke down on the way and stuff too. So it was a very interesting experience, but um, and at the end of the day, you know, it's, I, I don't think it's for everyone to go on uh, singing shows. I think that they're mainly primarily for people who want, you know, like who need exposure for their music if they already have music out or something like that. But since I was a songwriter and first and foremost, I'll always be a writer. It was really difficult for me to be on a show where I had to sing other people's songs. So that's just one like tip for anyone who's a songwriter and, uh, you know, is looking for a path to have their music be heard. I wouldn't, I wouldn't personally recommend going on a singing show. I would just recommend continuing to write music and to build up your catalog and to just put out music, um, whether it's on SoundCloud or um, however, really. Um, and I have to say, you, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back to Mikey in just a second. I have to say, yeah. I love the story that you almost missed your ability to audition for The Voice because your family's car broke down. Yeah, yeah, I had to, yeah, I had to catch a cab. Some, uh, a really nice woman like stopped her cab for me and my mom and we just, we made it. Uh, so, what, what? Yeah. Stars align. yeah, everything happens for a reason, I don't know. <laughs> well, I guess, the, you know, the, the, the more challenging, right? The more challenges, the more it feels like you really accomplish something when you finally get your moment. Um, what role, Melanie, did music play for you as a young woman. I mean, you say you were a writer and then that turned yeah. into songs. Like, what role did it fill for you as a, as a kid? Um, I just loved all creative art forms. So I loved painting, I loved photography, I loved writing poetry, I loved singing, I loved dancing. Um, so music was kind of like the base for everything. Ever since I was a really young kid, my dad would play a lot of um, like whether it was old school, like R&B or hip hop, or even like the Beatles or the Bee Gees. Like he was into so many different um, influences and that kind of in turn influenced me um, to love music and have an appreciation for music and to always be singing and uh, wanting to just really listen to music any moment I could. So uh, I think he was my biggest influence as far as like what got, got me really invested in music as an art form. Um, but yeah, I don't know, like as time went on, I just kind of felt like it was my passion and my purpose in life and just stuck with it. And Mikey, what about your start? When did you first realize that music was something that you wanted to do and how did you turn it into something that you could do? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's an interesting story because I started out um, in like, you know, school bands. Like I started as a drummer, I was, I was a percussionist. Um, and my mom really made me do a lot with that because she saw the talent early even though I kicked and screamed, she would drive me 45 minutes like each way to lessons and ensembles that were out of state for me to just be able to grow and develop those skills. And I, I absolutely hated it. And to be honest with you, I applied to be a photographer for college and through that process, like realized that, 
that I didn't know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And then a friend of mine's older brother gave me a music program. And that was the moment where I was like, and that program was reason, by the way, that's why I, I still kind of use it from time to time because it's my original program. But that program was the, the, the light switch turning on of, oh, I can like be an entire band and like, I don't have to just be a drummer in a band or I don't have to play classical music in, in, a, in a classical band or whatever. And that's kind of where for me, like I was like, oh my God, this is what I can do because now I can work on the music that I love listening to, which is hip hop and pop for the most part. Um, so that opened up the lane to find a school, like a college for, for, for learning more about audio engineering and just the technical aspects of it, as well as giving me like the time and space to be able to just work because I think that that's the main um, like comparable aspect of both of our stories and for every artist or producer or writer is that you're gonna you're gonna fall down time and time and time and time again and you have to keep getting up and you have to put everything into this like you the amount of sacrifices that I've made on a personal level during my early years like when I was in college and when I got out of college and was living in New York is beyond what most people do like it, you kind of you have to put absolutely everything into it like there's no well i'm gonna figure it out or like we'll do this and that to make it work it's just like you kind of have to jump off the cliff and just see if you can fly and if you fall you just figure out how to try it again and you just keep keep going and that goes for the way things sound in my productions as well i have a lot of um, younger, younger guys and girls that are, that are hitting me up, like, you know, what do you use for this? Or, or what drums are those? Or can you send me that kick or whatever? And to be honest with you, I use all the same stuff that everybody else uses. Like I use, you know, some boy wonder kicks or some Dr. Dre kicks or, or, or whatever. It's just like the same packs that everybody has. It's just about sticking with it until your heart tells you that it feels right and it sounds good. And then just, just being creative. You know, so here's a question for both of you that I find a lot of young songwriters, uh, new producers will struggle with. You played the demo for Playdate, and then you sort of showed the evolution a little bit. Yeah. How did you know when Playdate was done? How did you know when that song was finished? For me, it's a it's a feeling. It's like a, it's two feelings, I guess. Actually, it's it's wow, this feels really good. Like I can get up and walk around my room and dance to it by myself and feel like I'm performing it. <laughs> That's always a thing for me is I, I just kind of pretend I'm the performer in front of the mirror. Is, is, is air guitar happening in those situations or? If, yeah, sometimes. if there's a guitar, then yeah, yeah, 100%. Air, I just want to make sure. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a side of me that no one really will see ever. <laughs> it's a very personal side of me. Um, but then the other side of it is, the nerves of sending it to Mel in this case of being like, I hope she likes it as much as I do. What about on your side? Yeah, well, on my side, usually both of us know pretty well, like you'll send it to me and you'll be like, I could always tell, I feel like you do have that gut instinct and mm -hmm. it's always right. Like there's mm -hmm. never been a moment where it has been, you know, like we're mixed matched of right. like, this is my gut instinct. And I'm like, no, this especially is the not. more we do. Exactly. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was kind of instant. You sent it over and I was like, this is, it totally transformed the song for me. I mean, cause for me, all I had to base, you know, the song off of was really just that piano line and my, my voice the whole time. So he really transformed the song and made it into something completely different and added all these story elements that really built out the story even further. Like that little like breakdown that you do, you should play those like sounds, like the audio sounds that. Yeah. Yeah. So I can, I can touch on that real quick there's in the session i, I kind of color code all of my stuff so that i know where i'm at all of these yeah, yellow... if you want to break this down kind of slowly so anyone watching can really understand what they're looking at that would be awesome yeah let me yeah let me take this real slow so within this session i this, this is everything that makes up play date um and i color code things so, so that pink is vocals just so that i know where everything is and if anybody else opens the session it's easier for them so the red one is always where everything is going to. That's what we're listening to, what comes out of there. All of these green ones are different, like like reverbs, which is like um, like an echo, like kind of make it sound like you're in like a big gymnasium or little effects like that. And then pink is all of the vocals. Purple. Pink or purple. Yeah, I mean, that kind of looks pink here and purple here, mm -hmm. but, um, and then um, just just blue is usually just like main instruments as well as these ones 
Um, and then red is always base for me, which in this case was kind of an 808. And then uh, orange is always all of the drums, which always get bussed to their own drum bus, which, you know, people who work on music know what I mean. But if you don't work on music, this is just basically all of these things come together into this track so that they all glue together really nicely and sound like one unit rather than several different things. And then what we were just talking about now is all of these yellow tracks, which are different kind of like, I don't really know what to call them besides like almost Foley sounds. They're just like sounds from almost that you would expect in like a TV show or, or something. So I'm going to show- Are those actually like sounds that, can you play one? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show a few examples real quick. So here's like just kids laughing, which is in the song. And there's another one here. And if you're, I think if you're listening on headphones, you can hear that those are kind of like ones in one ear and ones in the other ear to make this kind of wide sounding thing. Um, can you play the part of the song where that actually, where that laugh is actually used now? Yeah. Uh huh. Just give me one second because I didn't pull up the drums. So just give me one second. I'm putting you to work. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you should be. But I forgot to open the drums because I don't use reason anymore. So I like, it's like my muscle memory with that is it left. <laughs> All right, opening up reason. But this is good because you get to see reason too. Reason looks a little bit more intimidating, but it's not. Melanie, while he's digging this up, I, I would ask you. Yeah. Um, because I love these stories, right? This only happens on TikTok where uh, a song is released like two years ago, three years mm -hmm. ago, and it's a perfectly fine release and everyone's happy with it or not. And then all of a sudden, two, three years later, you're getting like texts and it's like, oh, I, I'm hearing your song and it's blowing mm -hmm. up. What was your experience in that regard? Um, really just that. I mean, all my friends were like, hey, Playdate's getting really big on TikTok. And I kind of just, you know, I was like, that's cool, that's really awesome, but I did not expect it to be uh, really resonating with people the way that it is. Um, I actually just thought that it was just some quick like day thing, like, oh, the day is just, you know, it's just popular today or something. I don't know, it was, I don't really- But it would kind of pop up and then, and then yeah. go. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was gonna happen, but it just kept growing. And uh, I'm just, like I said, I'm super grateful. It was so unexpected for both of us. We were pleasant surprise, really. Yeah. When, did, yeah. when did you first realize that it was not just gonna pop up and leave? Was there something that happened that- really Yeah, my manager cool? was like hitting me up about it. Like, okay, hey, like we're, we're, we're gonna have to start making a decision on if you know, like if we want to really push Playdate again, because people really resonate with it. And it's like, you know, it's a great moment. So it kind of, when it, when it went from my friends telling me to then my manager and like the label telling me is kind of when I noticed how serious it was getting. Yeah. 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 I tend to, when the, like the, the managers in the label, like the first flag they throw up, I tend to ignore and yeah, be like, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, whatever dude. Like, yeah. Don't bring my brain back to 2015, 16. Yeah. I'm, in, I'm in 2022 <laughs> yeah. already. Like, yeah. but then once they're like, "Hey, like, look at this chart and look at that chart. Yeah. Like, the graph is just going up." Yeah, I'm like, oh, again, super surprising, but very exciting. Yeah, yeah very, very exciting, exciting. Very exciting. That's amazing. I love that. Um, okay, so, so do you have um, do you have drums up now? Yep, everything should be here. So just to review real quick, here's the sounds, the effect sounds that you'll hear in this section. So there's these two children tracks that we heard already plus uh, another classroom sound, and then a bell ringing, a school bell ringing. So now let me play this section for you. And also you should do the bridge bridge that's so cool because honestly i mean i've heard this song uh, 500 times and i don't know that i had picked out consciously picked out the laughter and now of course I'll, I'll never hear the song and not hear the laughter maybe i'm just not a careful enough listener maybe i didn't catch that part but that's amazing you guys are muted there we go sorry about that 
Yeah. Um, what I was saying was, um, yeah, we don't want them to be too upfront and too loud so that they're distracting. But yeah, it's just like a to cool. To fill it out, yeah. Right. It's sure. almost. It's like it's like an Easter egg in a movie. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like you didn't really know it was there, but you'd miss it if it was, yeah. or if it wasn't there. Yeah. And then like, and then when you do know, you're like, oh wow, that's a really cool detail that I don't usually get to hear in songs. I love that. Uh, and again, it's like these little details. As we talk about songwriting, and we're working with young songwriters as part of the After School All Stars program. Um, what makes a great bridge? Do you think about it as like a sort of distinct part of a song? Some writers love a bridge. Some writers uh, like yeah. can't stand a bridge. Is Contro not controversial topic these I, days. I can see that. <laughs> yeah, so like the way I, I feel about the bridge personally is it, it's so up and down for me. Sometimes I'll have the bridge so set up and I'll be like, oh, this is definitely the bridge. I already know that this part fits the bridge perfectly. And other times, uh, more likely, I will actually skip the bridge the first day that we write and come back to it because I feel like the bridge is such a departure for me personally. It's almost like this like other moment for you to like be able to like explore more on what the song is or expand on what the song and the story can be. So sometimes I feel like I have to like be in a different like mindset or perspective to come back to the song to be able to fit that difference of what that bridge should sound like. Sure. Um, and that's honestly, a lot of the time it was that it was like coming back to the song and then writing the bridge last. So yeah, I don't, I don't think in anything I really work on the bridge happens on the same day as the initial yeah. like thought. Yeah. But the only thing that I was going to add to that was, um, you know, like, you don't have to be super strict about like, Format, oh, I, I have or to have- it has to be a pre, there has to be a pre-chorus yeah. going before, the, or there has to be a post-chorus. Like, yeah, we don't like- Whatever yeah. works, works. We go back to what yeah. we were saying earlier. How do you know a song is done? Cause just cause it feels right. You yeah. feel it. It's a gut instinct, yeah. instinct thing. Cause it's important to say it's done and not go any further than that. Like mm -hmm. that's part of being good at making a song is like being able to know, know when, when to, to stop. stop. Yeah. So like, oh, and also, also having the confidence, I think, and, and I would love if both of you would maybe comment on this, but the confidence to put music out. We're all too often folks just work on, on their songs forever yeah. because if they never release it, it can't flop. Right. Or because right. they're anxious right. about what people are going to think about it or yeah. right. Then you get into Axl Rose territory where 12 years later you get a, a new release or something like that. Is it hard sometimes to just let go? You can go first. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we're working on an EP right now. That's we've been working on since, I don't know, I guess since this time that we've been working on K through 12. So it's like a lot of these songs we wrote during that time. And then also like we wrote new ones too in like the past year or so. So, and we're still to this day, like when this is over, we're gonna have to talk about the EP songs and talk about what we wanna fix and what we wanna change. So it's like, you know, it, it, you could go forever and ever and continue to add things and continue to take away things. And, and but it, you don't really know until you have that gut feeling, like that gut feeling definitely exists and it definitely tells you, okay, this is done and it's ready, you know? And once you feel that gut feeling, I think it's just a part of being in tune with your intuition, being in tune with what your body is telling you um, about your art, you know? Um, I just want to make sure you know, because I have friends there, that Atlantic Records did not tell me to ask you that, okay? <laughs> They're not, this is not them passive aggressively trying to get you to hand in the EP. That's not what's happening. Yeah, um, I'm glad. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> but you're laughing because like the truth is always funny, right? It is. Right, it's always right, so funny. Right. It is. Yeah. Right. It is. You know too well. Yeah. yeah. Mikey, what about what about you? Yeah. What I was going to add to that is, um, you know, part of the experience and growth of of getting better at music, like part of that is putting it out because it changes your perspective on yes. listening to it. Like. Like when something comes out, the first thing we do is go to Spotify or Apple Music or whatever streaming service and like just listen to it from there because it's like, I don't know if it really necessarily sounds that different. It's just like, because it's not coming out of my Pro Tools anymore or out of like, you know, my box folder where I'm storing demos, like it just, there's a different feeling, a different perspective. And like, you know, I remember when K through 12, the album came out, we were sitting in a hotel playing it off a of Beats pill and it was like, mm -hmm. wow, like, this is, it's out, like it's a different feeling. But also something that I like to tell people when they get a little stressed out about quote unquote finishing a song is there is no such thing really as a finished song because as an artist, you're always growing and you're mm -hmm. always like learning new things and stuff. 
So you have to kind of think of it more as a snapshot in time. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, because all the songs that I've put out in the past or you've put out in the past now, sure, we could probably make them better, but it's because we put them out and we, we, we went through everything that goes along with that. And then we did other stuff and experienced other things and, and just learned new stuff. Like right now for me, I have a new set of speakers that's changing everything for me because I can hear things differently and it's just making everything improve. But I could have never gotten to these speakers. Even if I did get them earlier, I wouldn't have been able to understand because I had to go through like problem solving like over and over again to really understand how to make things better. And part of, part of that is songs coming out. Yeah, it's true. Hopefully so I want to talk about I want to talk about K through 12 because, you know, you, you put out a whole movie, which is something that we should definitely talk about. Yeah. Uh, before I move on from sort of some of this hardcore songwriting stuff, I just want to ask, um, number one, well, my first question is, uh, if you had to pick one songwriter or producer or maybe a couple of songwriters and producers to tell um, the students that are watching this, hey, if you really want to study songwriting or you really want to study production, here's someone that I think is really worth your time. Does anyone come to mind that, that either you used when you were coming up and you know, or you're using now to continue to teach yourself? I think it's just about what you like, you yeah. know, learn from everything that you like. There's a reason why you like it, Yeah. you know? And so like, instead of just liking it, you can actually pause on it and yeah. kind of pull it apart. Totally, right. yeah. Whatever right. your favorite songs are in that moment, like look who made them and then look at more info if there's interviews or something with those songwriters or producers and see how they made that song and, you know. Right. That's yeah. another cool thing is that, that um, you know, that, that some of the streaming services now offer is you can look at those credits right on the song and be like, oh, like, I like this song and this song and it just so happens that it's, you know, produced by the same person or, you know, like has just one name in the group that like is common and, and, and you're like, oh, well, like, so maybe I should check out that writer or that producer or whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's interesting. You can just, you can just kind of see everybody in the process and find out why you like what you like, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And, and you both still do that. Well, I, yeah, I do. You do, yeah. I do. I'm I don't... a little jaded. I hear, I, I like can't hear a song without being like, hmm, what is that snare? <laughs> Yeah, I have like a definitely less like uh, I, I don't have that same type of ear because you're, you're a producer. No, much, yeah. no, I don't really know actually a lot about any producers or songwriters or anything. But I I believe in following your intuition when you're making music and art uh, and just in life in general. So that's kind of what I base everything off of is just my intuition. That's great. I mean, because we have kind of two different paths here two different Definitely. approaches. I'm sure yeah. might be also uses his, his intuition. All yeah, the time. yeah, a thousand percent. Yeah, <laughs> he has to. Yeah, <laughs> for yeah. sure. But at the same time, he's a little bit more of the, the yeah. technician, maybe Definitely. and wants to pull everything apart. Yes. Yeah, yeah. a thousand percent. Some of our funniest moments is in the beginning of writing a song, because Mel wants to just like flow as much as possible. And yeah. I'm like, where's the construct? So yeah. it's like, it's a great medium it to is. meet to meet at mm -hmm. because we, you know, I'd like she gets gets very creative, and then I can rein it in just enough, and the, but not too far, you know. Yeah. So just to, just to remind folks, um, you're watching the uh, TikTok and After School All Stars Summer Songwriting Series. Um, we're we're teaching some great students that are part of the After School All Stars program, um, all about songwriting, all about uh, production, and these are students in under resourced communities. So this is. Uh, fantastic thing. We're really trying to make sure that these students have a voice and have a clear path forward. Um, I want to I want to transition now into K through 12 uh, because you didn't just put out an album, you put out a whole movie. Yeah. So could you share a little bit about why that was important to you? Yeah, I mean, well, when I made Crybaby, I kind of, I really, I didn't have the opportunity to make a film, even though that's what I wanted to do. Like I wanted to just make one large visual that had all the music in it and was just this one piece of um, you know, art. And I couldn't do that because I didn't have the opportunity to because I was a new artist that just signed to the label. And when you sign to a major label for the first time, you're really only given two music videos um, per album cycle. That's like the norm. And so for me, that wasn't enough, obviously, because I, when I even signed with the label, I, uh, I had independently put out Dollhouse, which also uh, I made a music video for with my friends. And 
then, you know, over time, I just kept wanting to make more music videos for each song and I kept handing in video treatments. Um, and again, with that, it's like, if anyone also is listening to this and wanting to write music videos or write film or um, any visual piece, you know, of art, I think it's really important to, again, just like no matter how you do it, whether it's in your notepad or on in a notebook or on your iPad or in Final Draft and you're learning how to use Final Draft through a YouTube tutorial, you know, which is what I did. Um, there's so many ways that you can put down your idea. Don't be afraid to just put it down and to keep expanding on that idea. Um, I think it's really important to like, not be so focused on like doing it correctly or te what's technically right, you know, whether you're writing anything really, even music, I think it's important to just write whatever it is that you want to write and don't be so judgmental or critical of yourself that you end up not continuing that idea or not continuing to make it because I think our own, our own uh, fear and insecurity can kind of stop us from uh, living out our fullest potential. At least it did for me a lot of the time. So that was the one thing I had to be was my own insecurity on writing a script. You know, I didn't know how to write a script, but I knew I was going to do it. And um, that's kind of, I feel like, the energy for everything that I do. I don't know. Yeah, that you goes back to putting in the 10,000 hours. Like, there's yeah. no such thing as being like, I can't, like, this, I can't do this. Yeah. There's no such thing as I can't. Like, yeah. you got to figure out a way. Yep. There's always a way. I love that the 10,000 hours idea. We hear about that a lot. Yeah. And it's so important that people just put in their time. Yeah. Right? Definitely. Yeah, I'm sure you guys each got better and better and better yeah. as you kept working at these. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, now, I want to ask you, you know, Mikey and I are sitting here in the dude uniform. We've got our T-shirts on. Aesthetic <laughs> has clearly been something that's really important to you. Mm -hmm. um, why? Like, wh how does aesthetic shape how you sort of see fans experiencing your music or experiencing sort of not to talk about you in third person, but to talk oh, about yeah. you in third person, Melanie Martinez, like what, what role do, do the visuals play? Because I'm wondering if there isn't a connection between the movie and your aesthetics in general and how this all kind of helps bring your music to life. Yeah. I mean, I think me as a person, like I have a very specific style, you know, just like everybody has like the clothes that they like wearing. I like wearing specific clothes and um, dressing a certain way and I also uh, collect you know vintage toys and stuff like that so my house and my environment uh, and the things that I surround myself with are all you know within that same style and that translates in every part of my music it's not just like a phase you know that I'm going through it's like this is this is my art this is the stuff that I like and it translates through my music and my art um, the way anything really would in my life. Um, For you it's all about sort of the like your own expression and that can take yeah. place in video and music yeah. and yeah. Yeah, exactly. And Mikey, no disrespect intended to the t-shirt. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. I'm a pretty plain t-shirt kind of guy. <laughs> yeah. My t-shirt is actually the uh, after school uh, all stars. It's the uh, summer songwriting Academy t-shirt. Oh, so normally this. I'm wearing like absolutely fashion forward things. I just happen to be wearing this. <laughs> Wait, um, can you real quick? This is your, yeah. You're off screen. Let me see. Oh, sorry. This is the, um, Oh, oh nice. Cool. That's cool. Is yeah. it like tie dye too, kind of? This is a little bit of a tie dye, a faint, a faint awesome. tie dye. Yeah. That was, that's a nice shirt. Yeah. I, I would, I would sure. That's a nice um, shirt for me. <laughs> we'll have to. We'll get you guys. We'll get you both the oh, uh, summer songwriting T-shirt. Please. I feel, I feel good about our chances of getting that to happen. Um, <laughs> we're gonna start to uh, wrap up in a bit. Um, when we look at K through twelve, obviously this is an album that really tells a whole story, which is in part why it works so well as a movie. Um, when you were writing it, you talked earlier about how you start off with song titles. Mm -hmm. Was it kind of a similar thing for K through 12 that you yes. you sort of had these chapter mm -hmm. titles in your mind for this whole story? Yeah, so the way I kind of just set it up like, okay, school is the general theme. And now how can I, you know, uh, I guess think of just a million different things that could fit into that category. So just like Crybaby was all like about, you know, uh, childhood and nostalgia. Um, and so that's, it's the same thing. It's like, you just think of titles that would fit within that theme. And so we would just, you know, sit down and just think of literally anything we could think of, just write it down and try things out. And sometimes, you know, we would work on a song and be like, all right, this sounds really cool. Let's keep going with this idea. And the, the theme doesn't fit it. And it's very clear when that happens, we're just like, eh, this isn't working. There's no real story that's like happening naturally. 
So then I'll just move on to another title and then just start with that title. And just really, it's for us, it's like about fitting the, the theme of the song and the title with the music and making sure that they make sense together and that they're in harmony and not conflicting with each other. Um, yeah. And Fire Drill is the new single, the, yeah. which I think well, you just, yeah. it, I mean, it's, it, yeah. it's off the, sorry, go ahead, please. Yeah. The Fire Drill is the ending credit song on K through 12, which I wanted to put out a long time ago, but it was just, you know, it's like anything with music and stuff releasing takes time and whatnot. So it's finally out now, which I'm super happy about. Um, but yeah. And that must have been the decision you made, yeah. right? Like your manager was sort of thinking about, well, do we go back, you know, to, to play date or do we go forward? Well, yeah, it was more so like, you know, play date is this, it was more like play date is doing really well. And I, but I really wanted to put fire drill out. So I was kind of holding off on that because of play date and whatnot. So um, I'm happy it's out now though, because now we can continue to move forward and put out the EP, which we're super excited oh, yeah. about. Oh, yeah. That's very exciting for us. We've been working on that for a long time now. So. So what can we expect from the EP? Do you have a little sneak peek for fans or for Ooh. folks that are too busy? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't it sounds know. Sounds like maybe we're not sure what we can expect from the EP yet. You're still deciding. Yeah. No, yeah. Well, we've decided on the songs. It's just more so about finishing them. Like there's right now the dilemmas that we're having with it is like one of the songs uh, I know for sure that I want to be on the EP, but I'm having trouble with the way that I recorded the first verse. I'm thinking maybe I should recut the vocals on it, you know, so uh, maybe I should change the intro, uh, you know, instrument sounds like we're just it's little things like that. Where we're like, okay, like, how can we make this song the best that it could possibly be? Uh, you know, given that we're about to put out this EP soon and we want it to be, you know, the very best and we want to feel proud of the work that we've been working on. Mike, I feel like you so badly want to hit play on something new. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just, I more actually brought this up so that she could see options of things to talk about if she wanted to, because we have oh, some yeah. examples of, you know, songs from K through 12 that, you know, these are more of the original demos, oh, like before yes, yes, when we were yes, talking yes. about not necessarily needing to okay, be. Okay, this is something yeah, that's very interesting, actually. Yeah, you're right. So we were talking about this and how, you know, just to give people an idea of how much a song can transform, like you can have the starting idea of a song and you can write down, you know, what you think it is in that moment, but then you don't like it and you're like, ah, I like this piece, but I don't like this piece. And this is kind of what we mean by like knowing when a song is done. It's like, you just keep going until you feel like it's right. So there are these early versions of songs, like the songs uh, that had original versions that we ended up transforming and, and working on even more to make them what they are today are class fight, uh, detention, principal, and teacher's pet. And so, um, for example, uh, class fight had, actually maybe do principal, principal because the production is different, but it's like- There's two of them, yeah. Well, okay, so whatever the one, was it the, the original one, the first both. one? Yeah, okay, so principal, the first version that we ever made was in a hotel room and it was on the OP one, right? You had your little- Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah, OP yeah. one, yeah. Yeah, we had this little OP second? one. Uh, and we were just like, you know, just trying to figure out how to make a song over this little, just one. little sounds from this thing and- I love it. Uh, yeah, and so we wrote this original version of the principal and it, and it had the same lyrics and the same kind of, flow but it was completely different vibe as far as like being anywhere near finished um so we'll just play you some of that so you can hear the difference of what it used to be forgive me if i play the wrong one first i might need to switch it let's see yeah let's see it i think it might be that sneaky creepy money seeking always peeping fucking creeping got it on the down low it's how you think you always sneak you what if i So it's just like and another version. This, uh, like, there's a second well, one. Yeah, but not the chorus, the verse of that one. Yep. Yeah. One second, one more. Sneaky. 
sneaky, greedy, money seeking. Always peeping, fucking creeping. Got it on the down low. So you think you always sneaky? What if I had told your mother her son was a cruel mother? Cool. So that was basically the first version of the last one we played was the first version that we ever had. And that's why you can hear like the melody is so different. Yeah. You know? It's very stripped down, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Completely yeah. different production. Yeah. Completely different. So you guys seem like you're uh, such a good pair in terms of collaborating. You, you know, you're finishing each other's sentences in a good way. And that's great. Do you ever have moments where it's not so smooth? Do you ever have moments in the studio where you need to figure out how to work past the disagreement? I, I think not, that not often. really. Yeah, it's just more like what I was speaking about before. Like, yeah, like when we're mm -hmm. starting new projects and we're like, and we really want to stretch ourselves. Yeah, there will be some duds at the beginning yeah. and some like, you know, because we're stretching. We're yeah. trying to get uncomfortable and yeah. try to find something that we've never, never done, done before. before. Yeah. And then once you like kind of find a place where you're like, you know, on a roll, then it's just easy to yeah. use for the most part. Yeah, but you're right. It is really just mostly me being like kind of indecisive usually and you wanting to just like get the ball moving on whatever idea. You're like, it doesn't matter, just pick one, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But my brain will just be like, maybe we could do this. Maybe we could do this. Ah, I kind of like this voice memo. I kind of yeah. like this. So it's, yeah, but I don't know. How about, um, how about writer's block in one oh. way, shape or form? Do you ever deal with that? <laughs> Yeah, writer's block. Yeah, lyrically right now, I'm kind of going through like this, not not too bad of writer's block, but but it happens. It definitely happens from time to time. And I think it usually happens right before I get in the groove of making an album because with Crybaby it was kind of like that where I did all these different sessions with different people and it was my first time writing with producers uh, and other writers and stuff. And so I kind of had this you know, I was like in it all the time, every day, like writing with different people, or whatever. And then K through 12, I focused m just solely on working with Mikey. And we, you know, uh, we had this whole beginning phase where I didn't know what the theme was. I didn't know what I was going to do. I just knew that I wanted to write music and start writing my next album. So we would just write songs. And then finally, you know, when my brain started to pick up on what, you know, what, uh, where to go next with Crybaby's story with, you know, school and whatnot um, is when we really started to, to figure out the pieces and my writer's block kind of disappeared because I started to have a, a vision for what the album was going to be. Excellent. And yeah. in general, do you have, either of you have any advice for like uh, young block? writers that are dealing yeah. with writer's block? How do you, what do you really need to do to get past it? Um, I think it's really important to just live life and to just like, sometimes it takes really just, just being patient at, with yourself and knowing that you don't have to finish something in that exact moment on that exact day. Like you can come back to it and maybe it'll, it'll uh, affect you in a different way that you never expected to like months later even, you know? So um, just don't be too hard on yourself and, and try doing other things like painting, you know, painting opens up your brain in a, in a different way where it can, it can help you expand on, just you know any creative activity really like can help i think um open up That's yeah. a great advice. and same same thing on production side you know it, it happens but you get up you go take a walk you come back things sound different yeah like you if you go to sleep the next morning things sound different go go listen in your car you know listen on headphones listen in different places and like for me now uh like mel was talking about with the balance you got to be balanced for mm -hmm. me now i'm pretty strict I don't really work on the weekends anymore because I've found that that propels my my weeks so much more. Like I'm so much more productive and so much happier working if I give myself those two days on the weekend to Chill. go get out in nature, yeah. just like be with my dog, whatever. Like where I have a garden, I'm really into gardening, just being out in there. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and then on the other hand, it's like if things are not sounding right, don't ever be attached to anything and just keep you just moving. Gotta experiment. Yeah. yeah, you just gotta try things like. A lot, like even I, I heard Illmind, who's a really big producer that I've always looked up to from back when I first started and even today as well. And he always said, you have to spend hours and hours and hours just looking through sounds as a producer because like you just mess around and then accidents happen and sometimes those are the best ideas. So keep yourself grinding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, and then um, find perspective. Yeah. Along the lines of, of this sort of advice and, and, and bigger picture advice, maybe, um, you know, we are talking to some great students from After School All-Stars, and I'm sure a lot of other folks, um, young folks who are interested in careers in the arts. Um, what 
what broad advice do you have for folks uh, trying to make a name for themselves or trying to get a start? Anything maybe that we haven't touched on that you could share from your personal experiences um, to keep folks focused and moving ahead? Embrace the things that make you, you. Don't shy away from the things that, all the things that you ever got picked on or made fun of for, use that. Use that as your fuel. Use that as your fire. Use that to create something that could only be made by you. I love that. Love that. So powerful. And Mikey, anything from uh, from your experiences? Um, I just lost my chance. What was it? Um, just advice. I mean, even if you think about it as, like, if you had to go back and tell yourself something when you were a teenager. Oh. Yeah, I remember. So what I was going to what I was going to add is just that everyone's story is different. Don't mm -hmm. compare yourself to any other. If you're a producer, don't compare yourself to other producers. Yep. There's no such thing as like the ultimate success. Yep. Your story is so different. And yeah. like for my my version of success is different from many producers success. And if I sit around and compare what they have in comparison to me, it's not fair and I don't like it's you know what I mean there's no reason to feel one way or the other about yeah. it because my story is just completely different yep and that's what you have to remember like because I did that in college a lot where I'd be like oh like I need to listen to this producer because there's the hot one right now and like I just need to make it sound like them but that never worked yeah. it's all about just like really following your creative instincts and not comparing yourself to yeah other don't strive to be someone else just strive to be yourself yeah yeah follow your vision and if that yeah. takes you to an, a, a movie length project for an album, then that's where it's going to take you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I want to be respectful of your time. You've both been very generous with your insights, very generous with your time. Thank you. Um, thank I you. want to thank, uh, of course, I want to thank Danny and Lindsay at TikTok and TikTok Music for putting together this incredible series. Uh, I want to thank After School All Stars who are doing such great work working with students in under-resourced communities to make sure that they have every opportunity that they deserve. I wanna thank my band year program because that's, they support me every day and in so many ways. Um, love the students in the band year program at Syracuse University. And mostly um, Michael Keenan, uh, Melanie Martinez, I really wanna thank you both. Um, you've both been so amazing. It's really been inspiring for me and thank you so much for taking the time. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, we're great. Like we said, this is a great opportunity because, you know, we get to give back in any way and give information on what helped us get to where we are. And we're very excited to be a part of this. So thank you. Yeah, man. I yeah. hope everybody likes it and learn something from it. And yeah. hopefully I'll share some more yeah. sessions on TikTok soon. Yeah. Really looking forward to that. And uh, really looking forward to the EP. Can't wait to hear it. Awesome. Cool, man. All right, everyone go check out Fire Drill. I'm sure it's blowing up on TikToks near you right yeah. now. Um, thanks again. Thank Alrighty. you. Bye. Bye.